I just got back from Finland. I was uh, surprising my brother for his 30th birthday, which you'll see you'll see that video a little bit later in the month. Uh, but I had a very very nice package waiting for me at home, so uh, should be uh, should be coming around anytime now. Anytime. He's just he's being a little shy. Come on, bot. Coming. This way. He's just you know still a little shy. Camera shy. Thanks, bot. The new C500 Mark II. I named the Tesla bot because it's the closest thing I have to a, a robot. So, uh, okay, let's go. Let's go inside. We'll talk about the C500 Mark II. Woo! Uh. The office is still a mess. I left in a pretty big hurry, and so. Uh, my organizing is very, very much still uh, in the process here. Got bags, you got boxes everywhere. But we're, we're slowly getting it done. I guess the first thing we should address is uh, why did I just spend $16,000? Actually, more like uh, with the memory cards, those are $500. Batteries are like $400. Probably closer to like $20,000 uh, on a camera. Again, uh, I'm not, not doing so well on the early retirement thing. Why did I just spend so much money on this camera specifically and, and not the other ones that are out there? And honestly, it's been, a, it's been a really, really long time since a camera has come out that's really wowed me and been like, I really, really want that. And especially without even, I haven't even, try, I haven't even turned this camera on yet and I've never tried the C500 before this. But I did have some, you know, uh, some experience with uh, this guy, the C300 Mark II, which I've been using for like the last four or five years or so. So why the upgrade? Well, I, I guess we should, let's, let's turn it on. Let's turn this thing on first and uh, we'll see if it was a worthwhile investment or not. <sighs> All right, you guys are experiencing this with me. Uh, real time, turn it on. Let's see what happens. All right, let's first put in the time and date. Um, I New York, New York sounds about right. February the 6th, 2020. Can't believe it's 2020, the future. It is currently 3.30 p.m. And that, my friends, is what it feels like to turn on a camera that you just spent $16,000 on. Okay, so first off, this thing is full frame. My C300 Mark II here, which which I love. It's a great camera, really great for documentaries, and I've I've used it a ton. But it is not full frame, and it's super 35. The C500 Mark II is full frame. You guys want to see how big the sensor is? Hopefully, I don't get like dust in it. This is probably a, a not good thing to do to a camera. Look how big that sensor is in there. Dang. Let's put the lens back on before it gets dust in there. That for me was a massive reason to upgrade from the C300 Mark II. It's a great camera. I could keep using this for a long time still. Uh, this camera has had a really good shelf life, but I just really, really like full frame. I love how wide you can get with a full frame camera. So that is one of the big things for me. And then check this out. Raw. That's right, this thing can shoot raw 5.9K up to 60 frames per second, which is, um, that's a big upgrade. Oop. That's a big upgrade from the C300 Mark II, which can shoot 4K, but only up to, I think, 30 frames. Nobody, nobody uses 30 frames per second, uh, but it can shoot up to 30 frames per second. Basically just, you got 24, that's it. This thing, 60 frames per second in raw 5.9K. Two big thumbs up. And that's internally, you don't need any other recorders or anything like that, so that's that's really, really nice. What else can it do? It can do 4K 10-bit 422, and guess how much data you get per second? 810 megabits per second. That's a lot of data. You might be saying like, my Sony can do 4K. Sony records at like 100 megabits per second, so eight times the data in here, eight times? Enough said. 
It can also do 120 frames per second, but you gotta go into the 16 mil crop. I think that's like a two times crop or something. That's a big crop. Uh, so that probably isn't gonna be as useful, but that is also up to 810 megabits per second. So um, I'm curious. I feel like I still need to try it out, but with the crop, I probably won't use the 120 that much. 60 is fine. Of course, we also have Canon's autofocus, which in a cinema camera makes it very, very unique. Uh, yeah, Sony has autofocus, but it's, it's not Canon's dual pixel autofocus. Um, Reds, Aries, none of them have any autofocus. So there is definitely times where it's really, really handy having autofocus. I'm a really big fan of that. Um, we also have electronic stabilization in here now, which we didn't have in the C300. I don't think any of the cinema cameras have had that before uh, with Canon. Uh, so I I could, I could see myself using that sometimes. It's got a little bit of a crop because it's electronic, but um, another nice feature to have. Also, I like that they got rid of the eyepiece here. I never, ever, ever use it on the C300. This thing has just been in the way so many times, especially when you're trying to put it on a gimbal or something like that. It is completely useless. I never, ever use it. Um, so I'm really glad that they just took that thing off completely on the C500 Mark II. Also, now you only have this one cable for the monitor on the C300. Uh, you have two cables, uh, one for video, one for audio. Uh, it's, just, um, it's just a lot of random cables, so I, I prefer this. We have built-in ND filters. We have all these different buttons for magnification, peaking, zebra, waveform, all of this good stuff. And it's it's in a pretty small and compact body. Like, yeah, it's it's fairly, let me, let me get, uh, uh, let's compare it. For example, here's the black magic 6K camera. Uh, let's get that out of the way. So that's the Blackmagic 6K camera, and then here's the C500. It's not like crazy big. Obviously it's bigger, but it's not insanely, you know, huge. And it's modular. There's some other modules that you can add on to here, and you can take off the handle and just make it this little body if you want to put it on, let's say, a gimbal. I really feel like uh, the C500 is like, like the right size. It actually helps to have a little bit of size and weight. Um, it makes for nicer camera movements, especially if you're filming handheld. If it's too light, for example, the Blackmagic, uh, it shakes really easy. You get these kind of like ugly shakes. Um, actually, the bigger and heavier the cameras, oh man, I'm dealing with the winter gorilla pod. It's always loose. Um, it actually helps the more weight, the heavier your camera is, the more smooth and more organic, nice uh, your handheld camera movements are gonna be. So I think this is like a good, happy medium for me. Obviously no camera is perfect. Every camera has its downsides. For example, uh, it's got a new memory card system because the data is so insane. So you have to get CF uh, Express cards. I think that's what they're called, yeah, CF Express cards. So I don't have those and a 500 gigabyte card, which won't last that long uh, with the RAW, it costs like a $500. So I gotta buy new memory cards. That's a bit of a downside. You don't really have any good slow motion. It'd be awesome to have like 240 frames per second or even 120 frames per second in full frame with autofocus, high bit rate. I, even in 1080, I would be really stoked on that, but having the crop, that's 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 a bit of a bummer. And, and let's face it, it's very, very expensive. Who has $16,000? Actually, I, so the really nice thing about Canon, I don't know if this is just Canon Canada, but Canon has a 0% financing program. So I actually haven't paid, I don't think I've paid anything for this yet. Um, but you end up paying, I think I end up paying around $500 Canadian a month for like 36 months or whatever it is. So I didn't need to shill out all the money for this. And why that's really nice, especially if you're, let's say freelancing or you're working in commercials, most of the time you could rent something like this camera probably for like, 300 or so dollars, depending on the project. Um, you could rent this for $300 a day. So let's say you have a five day shoot, you rent this thing for $300 a day. That's $1,500, that covers three of your, your lease payments for this camera. So you didn't have to fork over all that money right away. Um, and you could potentially, uh, it's, it's, it's risky if you're not getting work, but you could potentially uh, make some decent money. I don't know if you guys saw, uh, 
This will, this will make sense uh, once I post the video from Finland. I went sauna and swimming, so you go sauna and then you go into like the ice water. Everything is cool. I filmed a little iPhone clip, you'll see it in the video. Um, and then literally like five minutes later, I go out there again and I slipped on the ice. I went like, I went like back like this and my shoulder almost like broke, but it went through like this crack and, and um, there was like these little rocks that are supposed to, you know, keep you from slipping. Um, instead, they just like sliced up my hand and at the same time, it pulled off my wedding ring and it went bouncing down the stairs and ice and I was watching, I was like, oh no, don't go into the ice water. It's gonna be so annoying having to try to find in the pitch black. Um, but luckily it just landed right on top of one of the icy stairs and I just grabbed it and put it back on. But I did get sliced up a little bit. Okay, so why did I buy a $16,000, $20,000, lot of money camera? Um, well, because I think this is pretty much by far the best documentary camera there is right now. It's the right size mixed with really, really high quality. The codec is insane. Then you have the autofocus and built-in ND filters and all of those things that make it possible to use this camera just by yourself. You don't need a big crew. You don't need a camera assistant if you don't want one. You don't need a camera. If you're using something like a RED or an Airy, you, you usually need a couple of people, at least one person to help you out. Um, and the weight, it's like, they're so heavy. Uh, so if you're shooting long days, filming documentaries, like the Being Potato Jet episode, I uh, hope you guys like that. A lot of people have been saying great things about that, so I really appreciate that. If you're filming something like that, this camera is Perfect, full frame, autofocus, really high quality, and I can I could even do it without an easy rig, which I I, I wouldn't necessarily suggest. I still like the easy rig, uh, but this thing is really really awesome for documentary shooting, and you could still shoot something like a high quality commercial or a short film or maybe a feature length film, some. Day. Uh, you got 6K, 5.9K raw coming out of this, so uh, you're gonna get some really high quality stuff also on top of it being, in my opinion, the best documentary camera right now. And this year, I really wanna shoot more short films and uh, documentaries like the Being series, um, maybe Becky and Chris for the next one, a little test shoot with the C500. Huh? Becky, Chris, you guys down? And uh, the C500, it's, it's very expensive, but uh, I think it's the right camera for me right now. At least those are all the reasons that I'm telling myself at night when uh, I'm thinking about how I just spent $20,000 on, on a camera. Hmm. Yeah. I'm crazy excited to actually start using this and film something with it, uh, but I just, I couldn't hold in the excitement I had to share with you guys. Um, and if you guys are looking at the C500, then uh, maybe my experiences will help you make that decision. Yeah, I, th I think that's it for this video. Uh, I'm gonna start trying to film something with this. Maybe I'll add in a few clips just at the end, maybe to, you know, spice it up, but uh, I'll see you guys later. Full review later, full review. This is just, this is just a first look. I missed you guys. Hey, Bob, you're looking a little dirty there. Can you go wash yourself, please? Gotta love smart cars.